Hey, welcome back everybody. Uh, it's a very early Saturday morning, nice and quiet, got a little bit of time to myself. And uh, you're looking at a bar of 4340. That's for our axles. And you can see it comes in, uh, it, it's a little rough, uh, but it's oversized. Uh, this is one and a quarter inch stock, and it's about anywhere from eight to ten thousandths oversized. So we'll take a skim cut on that. We'll prep one end up down here, approximately five inches in. We'll get our splines, a nice smooth seal area, and then we don't really care about the rest of it. After we get the 19 splines in this morning, uh, we'll cut it to length, and we got a lot of machine work to do to this end. Uh, to get it in the joint so we're gonna only concentrate on the 19 spline today and I've got a piece set up in the lathe we're gonna put the center hole in there chamfer the edge and uh, get it right to 1 inch 250 Okay guys, just finished the spline, and here is the index plate again. Uh, I think I might have explained this before, but I have a 19 hole circle here, and when you want to divide your 19, it's, there we go, we go 1, 2, and then 2 more spaces. Now, there's actually 3 spaces in there, because you always start from your 0, so, so you got 0, 1, 2. Um, it, it's kind of weird but um, there's actually three spaces there you move your fingers over so you can see I'm in one hole I got two three so it's actually just two because you go zero one two um, you get the hang of it when you start using the dividing head um, <clears throat> so we're just gonna kind of cruise around there I'm gonna try and get you some footage in here um, the machines kind of loud so I can't really talk over it but uh, we have our cutter Let's try and get set up over here. We have the cutter it is doing a perfect job on the splines, and we're just going nice and easy. We're at full depth there. It's a, um, a seventy-one and a half thousandths depth, and if we keep dividing that right, we'll have a uh, a perfect spline in the end. So I'm going to turn the machine on again, and. Hopefully, you can see what's happening here.
Okay guys, you can see this line just starting to form real nice. Uh, you'll notice also that I'm climb cutting. And the climb cutting is just so I can get a better finish on the cut. Uh, I have the table locked for climb cutting. And uh, it's doing a perfect job. It's throwing nice chips. And the splines are coming out very nice. Okay guys, let's get this thing broken down here. I don't know if you could have heard me when I was telling you uh, the machine was making a lot of noise, but like I say, um, I was climb cutting on that. Um, and that gave me the best finish. When I first started doing some test samples, I wasn't climb cutting and I didn't like the finish. Um, <clears throat> but I switched to climb cutting and that that really helped out. I got the speed and the feed just where I like it. So let's try a side gear on that. Spider gear if you will. Let's see if I can get you in there. Okay, that's what our splines look like. You can see that okay. I made my splines just a little bit longer than the factory uh, I made them a, a, about three-eighths of an inch longer uh, just in case there's any fit issues there's usually not but if there is I could tickle a little bit off there if they're too long or something um, but you can see let's see if you can see that you can see we duplicated the splines just perfectly. So let's try this fighter gear on there. Okay, now this shouldn't be like a press fit or anything or a tight fit because you got to slide that axle in the housing and get it in the spider gear. Now if I hold the axle, we don't have any side to side movement there, you know, rotational movement. Um, you know, try it a couple places. That fits on just perfect. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if you if you rotate it like this and it's slopping, you know you don't have a good fit. Uh, that's nice and tight. I'm going to try and flip it over and show you. Hang in there. That's not a good side. Let's try this side. And just try and show you the fit. Get that guy on there. Ah, hang in there. Okay. Camera's in the way. Okay, let's try and get you in there. Okay, 
Okay, hopefully you're going to be able to see the fit there. Uh, it is a it is a perfect fit. Took a lot of time to set up and get the the machine set up, and then once I had the machine set up, I didn't I didn't move it. But um, but there it is. That is the 19 spline side. And I got one more axle to do. I'll get that done now while the setup is good. Uh, super happy the way those came out. And the 4340 uh, will harden up perfectly. These will go out for hardening as soon as I'm done with them. Then we'll get them in the axle and get that damn thing rolling. But um, that's the 19 spline side. And I will show you the setup and, and stuff on the 6 spline side as well but I don't think I'm gonna to get to that today there's a lot to do but um, there's one I'm gonna set up the other one and it's the same exact thing just uh, just repetition just take your time and, and uh, cut it slow get your feed right your speed right and uh, and you could turn out splines like that so um, if you want to uh, step up your tools and your in your game uh, there shouldn't be any axle that you can't make uh, make axles for once you get it once you get the basics down so there it is I'm gonna get set up and, and do the other one and uh, show you what we got when we're done okay guys got the long side in there and it just about fits with that bench there but there she is we'll get going on that one next Okay guys, there's the two axles and the factory axle in the middle. This is the factory guy. Okay, get a tiny bit of slop on the factory one, but it fits it fits perfect. And I think you can see uh, the duplication is just about perfect. Camera's always in the way. Hang in there. Okay. There's that guy. There's the there's the last one I just did. And getting those splines like that, that is no accident. There was a lot of careful planning. Uh, I did. That just fits just perfect. Um, I did send the cutter out. I uh, sent both cutters out and uh, and had those made and one of them was close this is this is what I produced the first time with the cutter and it left no flat spots there it was it was just too big so I sent it back and had that done again um, it's kind of a pain in the ass. It takes a lot of time sending things back and forth, and it's not cheap to have them made. So, um, this is our next cutter. Uh, it takes it, it takes a lot of time and money to do stuff like that. So, what I'm looking for, if anybody out there knows of any universal cutter grinder machines, I am in the market for a cutter grinder machine. Uh, no, I don't want to be a cutter grinder guy. I don't want to make my own tools, but it looks like I'm going to have to. So I'm looking for a universal cutter grinder. Cincinnati made them, and a bunch of places made them. Um, 
you know, and, and I've looked all over the place at machinery dealers and even on eBay and stuff, and there's a lot of garbage out there. Uh, so if anybody knows of a machine, maybe a shop went from manual to CNC with their cutter grind. Anybody knows about a manual machine, um, an R8 size, the big one, um, I'd be interested in that. Uh, it's just, you know, like everything I do, I, I try and rely on other people and it doesn't work out real good sometimes. So, uh, too much wasted time on a lot of things. I'm always doing some weird stuff, so be nice to have a cutter grinder on the floor and, uh, and like I say if anybody knows of one feel free to let me know and put me in touch with anybody that's got a decent one you know you're always hoping for that machine that just one guy ran and uh, didn't beat it up and there's tooling with it and you know that that's the kind of something I'm looking for there's so much garbage out there uh, I've looked at a bunch of them uh, they're worn out they're beat up and uh, uh, you know I'm not gonna do that so uh, that's what I'm looking for next. Okay, so um, there we go. This is our next blind to make. So I've got to turn this diameter. There's a shoulder here, so, so it's a stop for the joint. Uh, snap ring groove and a nice lead in right there. So There's our form cutter for that, and there's going to be some test pieces. I'll make some. Uh, I'll make some sample pieces, uh, like I did. I don't want to waste material. Uh, but the 19 spline end is finished, and like I say, uh, I'll finish up the six spline, send those guys out for hardening, and then we'll be on our way. So um, that's how you put splines in axles, and hope you guys enjoyed it. Okay, so we've uh, got a lot to do today, so we're going to end it here. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.